Hey, what's up YouTube? I just wanted to make a quick video today about AC evaporator switches. Now these switches, these are, my truck's a 98, okay, so this is going to be, you know, older technology. But it does, it's not really talked about online. So the issue I'm having is my AC freezes up, okay. Now most people would think, okay, you got a low refrigerant charge. Okay, but that's not the case. <clears throat> I've replaced my entire AC system because uh, the the uh, compressor ate itself, and so everything's new. I got a new compressor, new lines, new AC condenser up in the front. Uh, I got a new accumulator, new orifice. All that. The only thing that's still original is the evaporator inside the dash. Okay, I'm not gonna. Not going to change that. I flushed it out really well. But there's more than one reason why your evaporator would freeze. And this is why I have my scan tool on here. So if you look at the evaporator switch, okay, I'm, I'm currently in low, low fan speed. Okay, this evaporator switch should be cycling the compressor, but it's not. It only briefly opens for a second once in a blue moon okay you see how the AC relay, relay just shut off there but if you look at that evaporator switched switch it's closed okay it's not opening like it should be it should be cycling this compressor on and off but it's not so that's the problem and I wanted to address it because if you look online at symptoms of bad evaporator switches, you will see lots of stuff about how the AC will fail to come on at all, which, yes, a, a switch can fail so it doesn't turn on anymore. That's true. But a switch can also fail so it doesn't turn off anymore. You got to figure that switch, that ev that evaporator switch that's on the accumulator, is, is it has load on it. Okay, it's it's there's a current draw. It does, um, you know, control amperage flow. So over time, you know, every time that switch opens and closes, I'm sure there's a little arc, a little spark, and con it's just contacts, and contacts wear out over time. So, the switch is designed to open, according to the information I found off of Four Seasons, it's supposed to open when the PSI drops to 26 PSI, and then it's supposed to close when the PSI rises to 45, okay? So that means temperature-wise, the refrigerant, the evaporator... It's possible to get down to 28 degrees, okay, before that switch will open. Okay, now when you let the PSI of the refrigerant get to 45 or 49, whatever the, the website says, that actually allows the refrigerant to reach a good thawing temperature of almost 50 degrees before that switch will close again. So it will defrost the evaporator before the um, before the uh, uh, compressor comes back on. So that's how it's designed to work. It's not working like that. And anybody who does house ACs, HVAC work, just think of a restricted air filter. That causes air handler freeze-ups all the time. People don't change their air filter. The evaporator coil freezes well that's basically what's going on in my truck right now because when it does freeze if I turn the fan up to high get enough air moving over that coil it thaws out so if it was a low refrigerant condition or a restricted orifice condition it wouldn't matter the fan speed it would still freeze up but that's not the case. We just have a case of not enough airflow 
And that is the reason why they put these switches on the accumulator. So whenever you have it on low, it will cycle the compressor. So I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, the next part of this video, I've got a replacement switch on the way. And we'll show you on the scan tool how it starts cycling like it's supposed to. All right. Through the magic of time and video editing, we are now later on. I have the new switch installed right here. Okay. And now we have proper cycling of the AC clutch. It's sensing when the pressure on the low side is dropping too low because there's not enough airflow over the evaporator coil <clears throat> and it shuts off. I believe the sensor, let's see, says it cycles off. Well, I don't understand kilograms. I don't have the conversion for kilograms right now, but roughly this thing shuts off at I think 26 psi on the low side and then it comes back on at 45 psi so before <clears throat> my accumulator would have been frozen by now and also the pipe coming out and given enough time my line would actually be frozen all the way up to the compressor and like people have tried to tell me before oh that means that you're you got too low of a Freon charge, your, your, your Freon's low. Now normally, I would agree with that, except for a couple things. Number one, I've replaced all the cooling system components in here. There is no leaks. And then I charged it to the factory charge, which is like two point something pounds. So it was, I weighed it in. I know it's got the correct amount of uh, refrigerant in the system and also if it was a low freon situation then the evaporator and everything should stay frozen no matter how high I put the fan see right now the fans on low okay but if I put the fan on high get maximum air circulation airflow over that evaporator if it was low freon charge it would stay frozen and that's just not the case so we've got we got some good dripping going on okay I didn't have dripping before because obviously my evaporator would just freeze instead of freeze and thaw freeze and thaw and also and I didn't even think about this but I had poor kind of drivability issues before the sensor was fixed <clears throat> and I didn't even stop to think about it that the evaporator switch is one of the parameters the engine computer let me see if I can move this get the glare off of there okay so the engine computer uses the evaporator switch as one of the parameters of how much it opens the IAC valve so watch this as it cycles okay IAC position See how it just rose up the 70? The switch is closed, compressor's on. Watch when it cycles. Open, off, down to 51, 52, 53. But what's really important here is look at the engine speed. That's pretty steady. And I did not have that before. <clears throat> you know, it, it was not as smooth as it is now. It, there would be surges and dips. Uh, when the compressor would cycle on and off. Now it's a lot smoother, a lot better on the drivability. So, as you can see, it's cycling pretty regular. Okay, the evaporator switch opened up, shut off the compressor, closed, turned on the compressor. Fans on low. <clears throat> so let's change the parameter here. Let's change it to high. Get some air flowing over that coil and see if it stops cycling as much. Sorry for the glare, I'm trying. Okay, starting to get air flowing through there. And as you can see, 
from data. But once we get the air moving over that evaporator, <clears throat> we start not cycling because there's more of a load on the AC system now. Notice with the increased amp draw of the blower motor, it also raised my IAC up to 98 and my idle is about 750 right now. So <clears throat> it's kind of crazy that such a little component is so critical on so many things. But I just I wanted to make this video because like I said before earlier in the video that when you research online that your AC is freezing nobody talks about this switch going bad this low pressure switch they don't talk about that all you see about that switch <clears throat> is when it fails in the open position then your AC won't come on at all yes that is a failure mode probably a more common failure mode than my failure mode mine failed in the closed position so the compressor would just stay on and on and on all the time so if you're having problems with your AC freezing up and you know your charge is correct you know your orifice is not stopped up and <clears throat> on my particular Chevy probably a lot of other Chevys the orifice is right here, okay? You take this joint apart, and the orifice tube is down in the condenser. You can tell that because look, this side of the line is dry, that side of the line is sweating. That's good. That means that the Freon, the refrigerant, is hitting that orifice, it's being restricted, and it's being misted out. It's being metered. That's good. That means there's a temperature drop. That's what you want. All right. Now you see that since we kicked up the fan speed, we got a lot more condensing happening here. A lot more water dripping out. So it's dripping out pretty well now. So that's it. That was the purpose of this video to show that just because your AC is freezing up, doesn't mean that you're low on Freon. Could be something else wrong too. But you want to see this. Nice sweat on the lines. Sweat is good. It means it's colder than the dew point outside. But you don't want it so cold that it's freezing. See, even I get conden condensation right here. But this would get frozen as well. It was so cold because it was not cycling because the air wasn't flowing over fast enough. But that's it. I hope it helps.